Let's be real here, if you're watching this video you probably already know what an iceberg chart is and you probably also know what Lego is already. So for those who are yet to be acquainted, an iceberg chart is, in short, lore or trivia about a given topic with the more well known info toward the top and the more niche information placed lower as you go down the chart. As for Lego, simply put, it's a plastic building toy, or at least that's what it may seem to be on the surface. Now I know what you might be thinking, oh I've already seen a YouTube video about the Lego Iceberg chart. However, an emphasis on the however, this is a different chart entirely. One which has not been explained by anyone on YouTube. Well, until now obviously. I talked a little bit about this iceberg on my TikTok not too long ago, same username, but of course I couldn't talk about everything on the chart, so here's that full breakdown. This chart comes from Reddit user Royalcraft, and I'll be sure to post a link to the original thread in the description of this video. Now, full disclosure, the first level of this iceberg is very entry level. I mean, yeah, I know you want to put the most well-known stuff at the top, obviously, but your grandmother could probably explain some of these entries, so I'm going to be pretty brief with these ones before I get to the real meat and potatoes, starting on level 2. Lego minifigures are the figures that come in all sorts of Lego sets, since they were first introduced back in 1978. They were designed by Jens Nygaard Knudsen, whose name I definitely pronounced correctly, and is credited with the idea to make the torsos, legs, and arm pieces separate and interchangeable. Legoland is an amusement park chain with its first location opening in Denmark in 1968, followed by Lego Windsor and the United Kingdom in 1996. Today there are a total of 8 Legoland parks, 3 in Europe, 3 in Asia, and 2 in the United States. Lego also has plans to open another park in Orange County, New York. Now, if I'm not mistaken, only one Legoland has ever closed down permanently, but I'll get to that later on. AFOL is an acronym short for Adult Fan of Lego. You know, the people like me who complain on the internet anytime the new Lego Star Wars set doesn't have triple molded leg and arm printing on its Darth Vader minifigure. The Lego Movie is a 2014 movie about a minifigure named Emmett. Emmett is an average Joe who ends up helping a resistance movement to stop a tyrannical businessman from gluing together everything in the Lego world. Maybe not the most flattering summary, but it's a pretty well made movie, including the likes of Will Arnett, Nick Offerman, and Chris Pratt. You know what Lego Star Wars is. The first licensed Lego theme has been one of the most popular product offerings since it first began in 1999. Another entry which really requires a little explanation, Lego sets are the plastic building products for which Lego is famous for. The first Lego sets with plastic bricks arrived on shelves in 1955 and Lego has not looked back. Lego in the singular form is Lego, Lego in the plural form is also Lego. If I have one Lego, then I have a Lego. If I had a second Lego, now I have two Lego. Lego not Legos has kind of turned into a way for Lego fans to gatekeep the hobby, and I mean, it's, it's really not that big of a deal. Lego Worlds is a sandbox game developed by Traveler's Tales and published by Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment. The game was basically Lego hoping to compete with Minecraft. A beta version was released in June of 2015 on Steam Early Access and was then released in March of 2017 for Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. A Nintendo Switch version was then released in September of the same year. The game was generally well received by critics but had difficulty gaining and maintaining a lot of active players. While immersive, the game definitely had some issues such as long load times and redundant gameplay. A major reason the game did not do as well as it could have can likely be attributed to its poor marketing. This reddit post on r slash game seems to describe what went wrong fairly well, stating that the game was lackluster as far as quests and bricks were concerned. Basically, this demo was only about 4% of what LEGO Worlds would end up being when it was officially released. The post also goes on to say that the game's release date kept getting pushed back and the hype for it eventually mellowed down, resulting in the game falling into near obscurity until it later received some more funding. 
However, due to poor marketing and the only information about the game on the internet being about the lackluster beta version, the game just didn't pick up any additional hype, causing a lot of gamers to simply brush it off as a Minecraft clone. The game would end up having a lot of influence on the LEGO Movie 2 video game as far as gameplay mechanics and is still on shelves as of me making this video. So if you're looking for a sandbox style game for only about $25, LEGO Worlds might just be what you're looking for. LEGO House is kind of like a LEGO Museum, LEGO Land Discovery Center, and LEGO Store all in one in Denmark. After opening in 2017, the house received 70,000 visitors in its first 100 days. The featured experiences include a restaurant in which your food is served to you by LEGO robots, the Tree of Creativity, which is a LEGO model more than 15 meters tall and built out of over 6 million LEGO pieces. Also included is the official LEGO Museum and the Masterpiece Gallery, which is basically a very impressive LEGO art gallery. There are a few exclusive LEGO sets that can only be purchased at LEGO House as well. Um, there's also an Ed Sheeran song called LEGO House, apparently. I think it's safe to say that this entry has nothing to do with that, however. Bionicle is a LEGO theme first introduced in 2001. Over the next several years, it became one of LEGO's biggest themes, playing a key part in saving the company from its financial crisis of the late 1990s. LEGO's financial situation was dire in the 90s, so it decided what it needed was a story-driven theme that appealed to young children. Their first attempt at this was through Star Wars, which became an instant success. However, the royalty payments LEGO had to make to Lucasfilm were significant. LEGO then decided that they would need to create an original story, the result of course being Bionicle. Simply put, Bionicle follows the adventures of the Toa, which are described as heroic biomechanical beings equipped with various elemental abilities who had a sworn duty to protect the Batoran, the prime populace of their world, and reawaken the great spirit Mata Nui. This story was told through comic books, novels, games, movies, and other various online content. The first wave of sets were launched in December of 2000 in Europe and Australia Asia as a test market to predict how well it would sell in North America. Right off the bat, Bionicle was a huge hit. In its first year, the theme brought in over $160 million in sales and was named the most innovative toy of the year by the Toy Association. When LEGO neared bankruptcy in 2003, Bionicle accounted for 25% of the company's total revenue and 100% of its profits. Bionicle was the reported top performing LEGO theme from 2003 to 2005, but sales dipped in the years that followed. In November of 2009, LEGO announced that production would cease after a final wave was released the next year. The decision was made due to recent low sales and a lack of new interest in the theme, possibly because of its decade-long backstory and lore. Despite initially being planned for a 20-year tenor, the theme was discontinued in 2010. By the end of Bionicle's initial run, LEGO had sold over 190 million Bionicle toys. Bionicle comic book writer Greg Farshti was given permission from LEGO to continue the storyline with chapters for new serials posted regularly on the website BionicleStory.com. Farshti stopped posting new content in 2011 due to other commitments and the website was later shut down in 2013, leaving a number of the Bionicle serials left incomplete. Despite this, he is active in the Bionicle community and even contributes new story details on various online forums and message boards. Hero Factory was generally considered to be LEGO Bionicle's replacement and continued until 2014 until Bionicle made a comeback in 2015, partially due to overwhelming support from LEGO fans worldwide. Bionicle was the first LEGO theme to be reintroduced following discontinuation. The re-release was more of a reboot rather than a continuation of the original story. This reboot would last for a total of two more years before Bionicle was discontinued a second time. Bionicle's legacy is still strong today as it showed LEGO the importance of characters and story which the company would go on to apply to several other themes to date, including Ninjago and Chima. LEGO Tower is a mobile game available for iOS and Android. According to the app description, players can construct a variety of apartments and businesses for one's minifigure residents to live, work, and play in your very own LEGO Tower. You can basically visit your friends and 
trade items. It's like a Lego-fied version of Tiny Tower. Those who are familiar with Lego's history know that the company used to make wooden toys from 1932 until 1960 before moving the plastic toys. Among these toys were yo-yos and the company's famous wooden duck. Lego was hit by a devastating fire in 1960, which destroyed the company's carpentry workshops. Lego soon chose to abandon wood toys altogether in favor of plastic toys, more specifically improving the Lego system toy, which was becoming more and more popular at the time, and like they say, the rest is history. Generization is a term used by some AFOLs to refer to Lego sets becoming simpler by renouncing set quality in favor of easier building methods. This trend has become common in several themes including Ninjago and Star Wars. Some LEGO fans would prefer that the company include more standard pieces and sets as opposed to making big specialized pieces. These big specialized pieces can be difficult to implement into custom LEGO creations which are commonly known in the community as mocks. Four plus sets have also begun to take over set release spots that would otherwise go to regular LEGO sets as 4 plus sets used to be released separately. Anyway, that does it for level 2, on to level 3. As I mentioned earlier, LEGO was a company in decline during the late 90s. In the years leading up to LEGO's infamous near bankruptcy, sets at this point in time were usually rife with just very weird pieces that had very limited uses and all around ugly builds. Sets were becoming bigger while the piece count dropped dramatically and designs were just plain uninspiring. By 1997, LEGO made some big changes. Set details were shelved in favor of decreased building times with fewer pieces and more playability features, something which drew a mixed reception from hardcore fans who were used to the meticulous construction required during the classic era of sets from the 80s up until the late 90s. LEGO designer Mark Stafford has gone on record to talk about just how bad things were for the LEGO group once upon a time. The following information comes from a Reddit post he made back in 2013, which I will now paraphrase. Basically, the LEGO company at that point didn't know just how much it cost to manufacture most of their bricks and had no idea how much money certs and sets even made. The most shocking finding regarded sets that included the LEGO micro motor and fiber optic kits. It cost LEGO more to source these parts than the whole set was being sold for. Every one of these sets were a massive loss leader and no one even knew about it. LEGO also made the bold choice to retire a large number of the LEGO designers who had created these sets from the late 70s into the 90s and replaced them with 30 innovators who were the top graduates from the best design colleges around Europe. Unfortunately, despite being excellent designers, they knew little about toy design and even less about LEGO building. The number of LEGO parts climbed rapidly from 6,000 to over 12,000, causing an issue regarding logistics and storage, not to mention a tremendous amount of infrastructure expansion for no gain in sales. This period saw the introduction of several questionable at best themes, including Znap, Znap, still not really sure how to pronounce that, and later Galador, which I'll talk a bit more about later on in this video. LEGO would post its first financial loss in 1998 at 23 million euro. That same year, the company laid off a thousand employees as well. As I described earlier, LEGO survived because of the timing of Bionicle and the internally controversial decision to license and make Star Wars sets. The company reorganized all costs, design was linked to manufacturing cost, and the company refocused on the core business of making construction sets. After two or three years of consolidation, LEGO hired designers who loved the product and knew the target customer because they grew up playing with LEGO and had ideas that had been restrained for years. It's always interesting to see just how far LEGO has come. This entry refers to a LEGO City commercial from 2009 for the then new Rescue Helicopter set. In early 2020, the script would become a bit of a copy pasta, a term which refers to a block of text that is copied and pasted over and over again online. The text was also pasted over various media, including political cartoons and various meme formats. 
This was kind of one of those internet memes that were pretty funny the first like one or two times you came across it, but got old pretty quick. Angry Faces refers to a study that found that the Lego minifigure expressions are becoming more and more angry in recent years. According to the study, the purpose was to investigate and present a summary of the development of the facial expression for all Lego minifigures that were released between 1975 and 2010. The findings were based on several statistical tests that were performed on data gathered from an online questionnaire. According to those involved, the results show that the Lego company in 1989 began to dramatically increase the variety of facial expressions. The most popular two facial expressions are happiness and anger, and the proportion of happy faces is decreasing over time, according to this study. Through a K-cluster analysis, they identified six types of facial expressions. Disdain, confidence, concern, fear, happiness, and anger. The study photographed all the 3,655 minifigures that were released between 1975 and 2010, and then identified 628 different heads which were cut out from the photographs. Happiness was the dominant emotion with 324, while anger came in second place with 192. The researchers also mentioned that there has been an increase in the amount of weaponry that LEGO minifigures come with. This can realistically be explained by the increase in licensed minifigures based off of action movies, for example. The researchers expressed concern about how the increase in angry faces might impact children, mentioning that we cannot help but wonder how the move from only positive faces to an increasing number of negative faces impacts how children play. Their research didn't investigate any links between angry minifigures and angry children, although it did kind of dance around that idea. The LEGO Vault is an underground vault containing nearly every set that LEGO has ever made, dating back to the 1960s. It is hidden under the LEGO Idea House, a private museum not to be confused with the LEGO House, and can be accessed through a secret door. The vault is not open to the public, although Beyond the Brick did post a tour video that can be viewed here on YouTube. The vault is considered a special place by LEGO, and is only open to visitors with a business relevant purpose. LEGO City Adventures is a TV series that premiered on Nickelodeon in the US in 2019. The third season was released on Netflix in April 2022, and the fourth season was released on the LEGO Group's YouTube channel in October of the same year. The show follows the adventures of the city's various community workers, including police officers and firefighters. Episodes typically run for about 12 to 22 minutes in length. Galador was a LEGO theme first introduced in 2002, which was accompanied by a sci-fi TV show titled Galador, Defenders of the Outer Dimension. It is considered by many LEGO fans to be one of the worst LEGO themes ever. The show was partially funded by LEGO and had a total of 26 half-hour episodes, which were broadcast on both Fox Kids and later on ABC Family as well. The sets included action figures somewhat similar to the style used in Bionicle sets, which had just been introduced the prior year. The story follows the adventures of Nicholas Bluetooth, and yes, that's his name, and his friend Allegra Zane, which also just so happens to be the name of an antihistamine used to relieve allergy symptoms. Anyway, in the story, the two teenagers find themselves warped to Galador, a world in the outer dimension which is being threatened by the evil Gorm. Once the chief advisor of the royal court of Galador, Gorm plotted against the king and queen by causing a riot on Kek. After his plot was exposed, Queen Rihanna banished him from Galador. The pair were sent there by a robot named Jens, who sent a transdimensional pod to Earth to retrieve the Prince of Galador hidden away from Gorm until he would be old enough to fight him. In order to defeat Gorm, Nick must find all the pieces of a key which will unlock the sealed gates to Galador. After arriving, Nick finds out that he has the power to glinch, basically altering his limbs to copy those of any person he meets, giving him special abilities that individual may have in the process like extendable claws. The glinching ability would end up becoming the core mechanic of these sets, each of which had an action figure with around a dozen parts. 
However, a major reason that the theme sold so poorly was partially due to the over-specialized parts and its limited compatibility with other LEGO themes. The designers were expecting Galador to be a much larger success after their recent work on the Bionicle and LEGO Star Wars sets. There is also a Galador video game adaptation for Game Boy Advance, in addition to a console slash PC version planned for Windows, PlayStation 2, and GameCube. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the latter version would not end up being released by the developer due to financial instability. The unfinished PC version was eventually found in various budget re-releases of individual LEGO games or bundles. So no, this isn't like a lost media kind of thing. Some designers blamed Galador's failure on self-competition due to it being launched while Bionicle was at the peak of its popularity. Only 15 Galador sets were released, with two being released in limited quantities and two sets being cancelled altogether. The theme's specialized molds partially also contributed to the inflated LEGO production catalog that I discussed previously. LEGO designer Mark Stafford said that he believed Galador was likely the biggest contributor to the 90s fiscal failures that LEGO experienced. Despite being one of the poorest performing lines LEGO has ever produced, the concept would later also be adapted to an extent with the Ben 10 theme, which also performed pretty poorly. Maersk is a Danish shipping company active in ocean and inland freight transport, including supply chain management and port operation. Very exciting. LEGO has collaborated with the company on a handful of occasions, which makes sense, I mean, considering that both of these companies are Danish. These sets are mostly shipping trucks or other vessels and have been produced on occasion since 1974. There are only about 8 Maersk sets that have been made over the years, all of which are worth quite a bit today, as these sets are all either promotional releases or LEGO exclusives. The minifigures are no different, being quite valuable themselves, despite most of which being somewhat generic. That does it for the third level, so moving on to level 4. Samsonite is a premium luggage manufacturer and retailer founded in Denver, Colorado. What does that have anything to do with LEGO? Well, looking to establish its brand in North America, LEGO turned to Samsonite and licensed the manufacturing and distribution rights to the luggage firm in the early 1960s. If you are a European company looking to globalize your offering, it could be much easier to simply license the production to a company in that market rather than try to do all the heavy lifting yourself. At first, Samsonite manufactured the basic bricks in its Ontario factory and imported the specialty pieces like trees from Denmark. In 1965, Samsonite would open a second plant in Loveland, Colorado exclusively for LEGO manufacturing. And by the mid-1960s, the product offering that Samsonite was marketing was almost entirely different than that of LEGO in Europe. The arrangement between the two companies ended in the United States in 1972 due to a dispute, but Samsonite continued to be the distributor in Canada up until the late 80s. This deal was key in establishing the LEGO brand in the US and was also part of an overall expansion attempt into toy manufacturing by Samsonite in the 1960s that was later abandoned in the following decade. Today, Ninjago is one of LEGO's top themes, but LEGO did not initially plan for the theme to last so long. Ninjago was quite successful in its first year, and an additional two years were greenlit before a planned discontinuation in 2013. After a short hiatus, Ninjago continued after feedback from fans and has been in production ever since. Legends of Chima was also designed to replace Ninjago, but was later phased out to introduce other themes such as Nexonice. Illegal LEGO building techniques are techniques that put stress on the elements used. Using these methods would cause the pieces to break down or to form eventually. Product collections are sets that contain multiple sets within them, usually for a cheaper price than buying all the included sets separately. These sets are typically pretty sought after by LEGO collectors and are distributed in a limited quantity to a select few retailers. LEGO Serious Play is a theme that, according to LEGO, began as an experimental process designed for use in guided workshops 
with adults to prompt dialogue and encourage reflection, as well as develop problem-solving skills and use of imagination. In layman's terms, this is basically a line of LEGO sets that is targeted toward large companies with the purpose of corporate team building exercises. These sets can also be absurdly expensive in some cases. For example, the Identity and Landscape kit set is $790 despite only containing 2,008 pieces. Now this price per piece ratio may seem pretty bad, but yet again, this set also does have a large number of base plates and duplo pieces. With that being said, it is kind of funny that a set marketed toward white collar adults has a bunch of duplo animals included. There's also an entire Wikipedia page about the concept of serious play, but it kind of just seems like a bunch of mental gymnastics by the looks of it to justify playing with Lego as an adult. It's not that big of a deal, man. Naj Bricks is more or less the alter ego of a popular Lego YouTuber by the name of Jing Bricks. The channel is basically a satirization of how clickbaiting and fake Lego YouTube personalities have become in recent years. Among his videos are exaggerated haul videos and fake reviews of non-existent Lego sets, such as the Star Wars Lava Speeder. Initially, it seemed to some that this channel was an imposter of Jang or a parody. However, it quickly became clear that the channel is directly affiliated with Jang. Ironically enough, YouTube would take down the Naj Bricks or Ganaj Bricks, however you want to pronounce it, channel for impersonation but the account would later be reinstated. This one is clearly a bit outdated, but the Star Wars license was set to expire in 2022. I mean, clearly it's been renewed again, considering the fact that as of me making this video, it's 2023 and Lego Star Wars sets are not going anywhere anytime soon. And with that, level four is in the books. So now on to level five. This entry refers to a somewhat bizarre controversy over the 2012 LEGO Star Wars set Jabba's Palace. If you follow me on TikTok, chances are you might already know about this entry. This set made international headlines for allegedly reinforcing negative stereotypes regarding Muslims because someone claimed that it was similar to a famous mosque in Istanbul. A father in Vienna complained to the Turkish Cultural Community of Austria over the set after his son received it as a Christmas gift in 2012 and the community soon complained to the Lego group, saying that the set in question had educationally and culturally effective defects. According to a quote from the group, the terrorist Jabba the Hutt likes to smoke hookah and kills his victims. The statement also said that it's very clear that the figure of the ugly villain Jabba and the whole scene serves up racial prejudice and vulgar insinuations against Orientals and Asians as sneaky and criminal personalities. The center also said it reserved the right to file hate crime complaints with the German and Austrian authorities, and many people thought that this was a publicity stunt or a prank of sorts. The LEGO group must have taken it seriously to some extent, because it issued a statement in return saying that the model in question is not based off of any real building, but rather it depicts a fictional scene of Jabba's palace on the planet Tatooine from Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. What is also funny is that the LEGO representative referred to this set as being from A New Hope instead of being from Return of the Jedi, which just added to the absurdity of this whole situation. LEGO basically said that they regret that the group has misinterpreted what this set depicts, but it has nothing to do with real-world locations, as this is a LEGO Star Wars set. A spokesperson for the Turkish cultural community responded again by saying that the group cannot accept LEGO's answer, claiming that the company wants to make war respectable by producing games for children. He continued by claiming that LEGO should show how to construct a peaceful world. LEGO would go on to retire the set in question, but not because of the group's complaints. Chavez Palace was on sets for just as long as any other regular set, being retired at the time when it was planned to, along with the other sets from that LEGO Star Wars wave. LEGO would also re-release the palace to depict a version based on the Book of Boba Fett Disney Plus series. This version had very little exterior detail, making some wonder if the previous controversy 
were related to the design choices of this set. The name Bionicle is short for Biological Chronicle. A common misconception is that it stands for Biomechanical Chronicle, or simply from Bionic with an O suffix at the end. This entry refers to a study published in the Research in International Business and Finance Journal. This study found that LEGO sets grew in value by 11% annually between 1987 and 2015, performing better than many conventional investments including stocks and gold. LEGO sets function as a commodity which means that they are produced in limited quantities and are therefore finite. The reason people are willing to pay so much for LEGO in the secondary market comes really down to two factors, rarity and nostalgia. LEGO prices vary quite a bit on the secondary market and typically increase in value two to three years after the retirement of that set. Also worth noting is that returns can range from negative 50 to 600% annually, and the prices of small and very large sets grow faster than medium-sized ones. Additionally, sets based on movies like Star Wars being a major example and holidays will see the largest growth in value along with limited edition and promotional sets. Clutch Powers is the name of the main character from The Adventures of Clutch Powers, which was a direct-to-DVD Lego movie released in 2010. There is also a character with the same name in the Ninjago TV show, although this is not the same guy from Clutch Powers. Rather, this character is simply a reference or homage to the movie. Although Clutch Powers is referenced and appears in Ninjago, he is not necessarily the same person and is simply meant to be the Ninjago take on the character. There are plenty of references and nods to other LEGO themes from Galador to Nexo Knights in the Ninjago canon, However, that does not mean that the themes themselves are canon in Ninjago. LEGO City in-flight sets are products that are only sold or distributed through airlines, generally speaking at least. Usually, these sets include some sort of plane build. For example, World City has 20 identical sets, each with different brand stickers. These stickers are typically related to the airline selling these types of sets. For years, LEGO has refused to make green and gray basic pieces, although more specialized pieces were fine. This was due to the possibility that children might make tanks or other war-related builds with those pieces. LEGO had, and still has today, a pacifist policy when it comes to their products and brand image. Obviously this has changed over the years as LEGO realized that licensing equals money when they began making Star Wars sets. LEGO has since produced basic pieces in these colors. For example, most original trilogy sets are just a cluster of gray pieces. H0187 vehicles were LEGO cars produced between 1958 and 1966. All the models are in 187 scale and all the trucks are in 190 scale. Among the car manufacturers included were Volkswagen and Ford. Today these vehicles are worth quite a bit depending on the condition. Up until 1962, these vehicles were made from a different type of plastic, as opposed to the ABS plastic that LEGO still uses today. As a result, these toys can be more difficult to find in a nice condition in comparison to those post-1962 vehicles. These cars can sell for thousands of dollars today and are a niche collectible. Anyway, that does it for level 5 of the iceberg. Rather than make you sit through a multi-hour video, I'm just going to go ahead and make a second part here shortly, and with that, be sure to subscribe to be notified when part 2 does drop. This is also my first YouTube video, if that isn't obvious, so I would appreciate if you would leave some constructive criticism in the comments, keyword there being constructive. Thanks again for watching, and stay tuned for part 2 because things are about to get interesting.